Let's talk about tracks. In today's video, we're going to get into tracks, how to manage them, and some fun little fiddly bits that you can do in Reaper. So let's get into it. So here we are in a blank Reaper project. And the first thing that we're going to want to do is make a track. Now, if you're used to other DAWs, you'll probably know that there are many different types of tracks in most other DAWs, like MIDI tracks, aux tracks, instrument tracks, stereo tracks, mono tracks, et cetera, et cetera. But in Reaper, you have basically only one type of track. Any track can be MIDI, any track can be an aux, any track can be a folder, and on and on and on. It's actually really flexible and makes things way, way, way easier instead of needing to make several different types of tracks. So the simplest way to make a new track is to just double click in this left-handed area here. So if I double click, a brand new track is made. Now it's not a specific type because there aren't really any specific types in Reaper. There's no different types of instrument tracks or stereo tracks or whatever it may be. Every track can be every other type. So this track can hold MIDI on it as well as audio at the same time. But we'll get into that in just a second. Now, yes, I did double click to make a new track and that's easy enough and straightforward, but we wanna make actions or shortcuts for all of these things. So I'm gonna hit actions at the top and then go to show action list, which my default shortcut for that is question mark. And in this filter, I'm gonna type in new track. So we're gonna see a few options here on making new tracks. And the one we're concerned about is insert new track. And my shortcut for that is command T cause I'm on a Mac, but you can set it to whatever you want, but I just recommend you set it to something. Now, the next thing you wanna know about in this action list is insert multiple new tracks. So my shortcut for that is command control T. And what that allows us to do is insert multiple tracks at the same time. So first thing I'm gonna show you is obviously just using the regular add track shortcut. Every time I hit command T, it makes a new track. And some of you may be wondering why mine are all rainbow and yours might be the default gray. Don't worry about that. We're gonna get into track coloring in a second. I'm just gonna delete all these. But if I hit control command T, which is the shortcut I have set up for creating multiple new tracks, we get a window like this come up. So I can make 10 tracks and they can be named and it'll add numbers to the end of those names. So I can call it explosion layer. And then when I hit okay, you'll see that these tracks are now named explosion layer one, explosion layer two, explosion layer three, and on and on. It basically creates a increasing number whenever we're doing add multiple tracks. So a nice little handy feature, just so you know that it exists. Now I did mention there's basically one kind of track, but there's also one other consideration you need to make. So if I go back into my actions menu and go to new track, you'll see we have an option here called insert new surround track. Now I barely work in surround at all, but you will need to use surround tracks if you are working in surround. So let's add one of those surround tracks right now. And I just click that run button at the bottom here when I have this action highlighted. And what that does is it basically makes a track that gives us a surround panner built onto it. Now this track is actually not different in any way from the typical tracks that we would create. It just automatically comes with a surround panner built into it, which is pretty cool. So a nice little handy feature there in case you're working in surround. Now, like I mentioned before, some of you may be curious about why my tracks are all automatically colored and all rainbow flavored. So let's talk about track coloring because that's important to stay organized. And I love seeing sessions that are colorful instead of just default colors. That actually drives me insane. So the first thing that we wanna do is make sure that we have the SWS extensions installed. And I mentioned those in the very first video of the series. So if you haven't installed these yet, go watch the first video, download the SWS extensions for Reaper, and this will allow you to do that. So we go to extensions and we wanna go down to SWS options. And you'll see an option right here called enable auto track coloring. And what that will do is allow us to set up parameters that will automatically color our tracks as they get made or as they get named. But that's not the only step we need to do. So we wanna turn that on, make sure enable auto track coloring is on. But the next thing that we wanna do is go up in this extensions menu where it says auto color slash icon slash layout. Basically what this allows us to do is add rules to Reaper that will automatically color our tracks or add an icon or change the layout based on a bunch of different parameters. So you can see here, I have a rule set up where it says any track color random. But I'm gonna delete this. I'm gonna delete this rule so we can go through this together and make a new rule 
that basically will automatically color our tracks. So I'm going to hit add rule and you can see the rules applying to a track and you can right click to change any of these parameters when you're mousing over any of them. So the rules for track by default, great. When I right click, I'm going to click any. So any new track that gets created, color is random. So now it's just going to create rainbow tracks every single time I make a new track, which I like. So I'm going to add a new rule that may make things a little more organized for you, depending on how you like to work. So I'm going to add a rule. And by default, it's assigned to the track, which is great. We can talk about markers and regions later, but I'm right clicking any of these to change the parameter I'm affecting. But you can see where it says filter and name in brackets. I'm going to double click where it says name and I'm going to type in guitar. So now any track with the word guitar in it, it's going to apply a color to it. So in this case, I'm going to right click where it says none under color and go to set color. Let's change it to blue. And now it's that's the hexadecimal for that blue color that we just chose. So now we have this new rule where any track with the word guitar in it will be blue. So I'm going to make a new track. You can see it's default gray because I got rid of our random coloring rule from earlier. And I'm going to rename this to guitar. And now whenever I have a track that has the word guitar in it, it'll automatically color that track blue. So you can have things like VO for voiceover. So if you have a track with the word VO or voiceover in it, it'll automatically color it to yellow or whatever it may be to make sure that things stay nice and organized. It's really cool. It's a nice little feature, keeps things much cleaner and much, much faster. So before we get into this some more, there's something very important we need to do. And if you've been sticking with this series, you know what it is. I'm going to get some tea with my good boy Thane. All right, so now that we're back, let's talk about a feature that I love dearly in Reaper, and that's called folder tracks. Now, all of you know, likely, that folder tracks and folders in other DAWs are really, really common, but there's something unique to the way that Reaper handles folders. So how folders work isn't a special track. It's not some special thing you need to do. All tracks can be folders, just like all tracks can be aux tracks, all tracks can be MIDI tracks, all tracks can be soundtracks, whatever it may be. All tracks can basically do all things. But let's talk about how folders look and how they work within Reaper. So I'm going to make three tracks here. So we have one, two, and three. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the bottom left hand side of this very top track. You can see a very, very small button here that looks like a folder. And when I hover over it, it turns into a little plus icon. So if I click that little plus icon, you'll see that it indents the other tracks underneath it. And basically, it nests these tracks within this larger green one, this light green one at the very top. Now, these two tracks are in the folder of this very top one. So let's talk about what that means. I'm going to add a few sounds to these two tracks. I'm just going to pick randomly so I don't expect it to sound good. And you're going to see why I would even want a folder track in the first place. Okay, so I chose two things at random, basically, and I'm going to solo each of them. And you're going to hear what each of them sound like, just so we can get an idea of what we're working with. So I'm going to solo each of these tracks individually. So I'm going to solo this first one. And as I'm soloing, I'm thinking, well, we should probably set up an action for that, right? So I'm going to hit question mark to go to my actions menu. I'm going to hit solo here. And what we're going to do is find the track solo. So we have solo slash unsolo tracks right here. And there's tons of different options here that you can see. You have so many options when it comes to just soloing. But my shortcut is set to control shift S or shift control S. And you can set it up to whatever you want. But if you want to be able to toggle tracks soloed or unsoloed, this is where you do it. Okay, so let's get back to it. Let's take a listen to this first one. Great, so something metallic from a library. In fact, I think it's this robotic life form one right here at the bottom. And this very second one here, I'm gonna solo that. Cool, so we got an ice sound effect. Again, these are both from libraries. I didn't make these from scratch, but these are two cool sounds that we can kind of work with. 
Okay, so the point of a folder track isn't just a container, though that is nice. It also lets us change the parameters of everything inside of it. So for example, if I'm playing the sound back and I want to change the volume of all the tracks all at the same time, I can use this volume fader at the top of this folder track. And I'll just rename this to folder so it's more clear. And I'll hit play and play with this volume fader. So it'll affect the volume of all of the tracks within it all at the same time. And if I open up my mixer, which you might as well set up an action for that, my default is X, but you can kind of set it up to whatever you want it to be. So toggle mixer visible is what you want. And we'll talk more about the mixer in future videos and how to work with it and all that sort of good stuff. And my default is X because it's really easy to reach, but you can choose whatever you want. So I bring up my mixer and you can see up here in this top section above each of these tracks, this is where I can insert effects. So I'm going to insert some effects here on this folder track and those plugins will apply to everything inside of it. Basically, it'll be affecting everything within the folder. So I'm going to add reverb just so it's really clear. And I really like Fab Filters Pro R reverb an awful lot. And you can see they here that I searched for the plugin right up here, which is really nice, makes things a lot faster. So I'll just throw in Fab Filter Pro R, but we're gonna cover plugins and all that sort of stuff in future videos. So don't worry if this is a little too intimidating, don't worry about it right now. So if I hit play now, you'll hear that both of these tracks have reverb on them. So just because they added a plugin to the folder track, everything below it is affected. Essentially, these folder tracks are submixes. So I can change the volumes of each of these individually, or I can change the volume of everything as a whole. It's very nice and just very, very handy to keep things all organized and able to affect everything all at once. Now, there's plenty more you can do with folders. That's great. But we're going to talk more about that in more advanced features pretty soon in future videos. Now, when it comes to adding new tracks to a folder, if I just start adding tracks next to this last one I have here by hitting Command T, you'll see that every new track I make after that is also within that folder, which is pretty great. I usually do want that sort of functionality. And you can see here that if I hover over the bottom left of any of these tracks within the folder, I can create a folder within the folder. And when you're looking at the mixer down here, you can see these little indentations and these little arrow icons really, really tiny next to each of these folder tracks denoting what a folder track is. And you can see the color that line kind of goes all the way over to the left hand side to make it clear that this is a folder track. Yes, you can put sound or MIDI on the folder track itself as well, because every Reaper track can basically do everything, which is really, really nice. But we're not going to get way too into making folders within folders within folders within folders. But know that you can indeed do this, I think, an unlimited amount of times. I've never hit any sort of limit when it comes to seeing as how many folders I can put within folders within folders within folders. But it is a great way to keep things nicely organized. Now, if you want to bring tracks outside of a folder, you can, of course, click that folder button again on the bottom left that we clicked in the first place. And what that's going to do is basically turn this track that was a folder into not a folder anymore, which is handy to have. And if you want to keep things organized and clean on the top left hand side of each of these folded tracks, you'll see a little arrow it looks like it's pointing down. If I click that, you can see it changes the view of the tracks within the folder. So we can click it once to shrink everything to make it much easier to see. You can click it twice to make everything really, really tiny, which is actually quite nice when you have hundreds upon hundreds of sound effects tracks. So you can manage your views very, very nicely. Now, before we start wrapping this video up, you might be curious about zooming in and out with all of these tracks going on because, you know, that's an important workflow thing. So, of course, you can set up actions for all this. I have actions set up already for zooming in and zooming out vertically and horizontally. So let's go into the actions list to check that out. So I'm just going to type in zoom in the actions list and the ones that you just saw me use are zoom in horizontal zoom in vertical then zoom out horizontal and zoom out vertical we'll go more into kind of specific zoom things that you can do because there's quite a lot weirdly enough it's a very customizable daw just like we talked about so the ones that you're going to be most concerned about right now are probably zoom in 
vertical and horizontal and zoom out vertical and horizontal. And I have those set up to zoom in horizontal being command option right arrow, zoom out horizontal being command option left, zoom in vertical being command option down and zoom out vertical being command option up. You can set these to whatever the heck you want. And there are some defaults set, I believe, but set them to whatever you want them to be. I just like command option because I think that comes from Logic or Reaper or Cubase or something like that. It comes from some other DAW that I've used before, not Reaper, but some other DAW that I liked that I've used before. And I just kind of got used to it. But that's how you zoom. That's the general gist on how you kind of zoom in and out of all these tracks. Now one last thing, one last thing I want to cover because we covered colors a little bit already when it comes to randomizing them, but let's say we want to change the color of any of these tracks, you know, maybe we want some of these tracks to shift colors, maybe we want them to kind of dance around and we don't like the colors that they currently are, so we want to shift the tra colors of the tracks that we have highlighted. Or maybe we want to color everything in this folder to be the same color. Maybe you want everything to look uniform. So we want that folder track to stay like green, but everything else inside of it to be a single unified color. Let's talk about that. So I'm going to go to the actions menu again. I'm going to type in track color and you'll see you have two options down here that I have mapped. As you can see, you have tons more, but these are the ones that I really like that I use all the time. And you have command option C is what I have it set up to for track set to random colors. And basically what that does is any track I have highlighted, it'll just color to random colors. And the second one, which is set to one random color, any track that I've highlighted or a series of tracks that I've highlighted will all change to the same color in unison. So both very helpful options to keep things nice and colored and nice and organized. I usually don't have colors that denote specific things. I just color things in some form of unity, but I don't always color voiceover tracks yellow or guitar tracks blue or anything like that. I just like to make sure that everything has a color and if they're all a part of the same family that they all share the same color. Kind of like this. So that's how I like to do things. Okay, that's it for today's video. You learned a little bit about how tracks work, how folder tracks work, and some fun bits on how to color your tracks, which is always helpful and keeps things organized. So if you like this video, of course, subscribe, hit the like button, all the standard YouTube stuff. And if you're interested in working in the game industry as a full-time composer or sound designer or any sort of audio-based discipline, sign up for my newsletter because you get two free courses that will teach you how to network, get paid, find your first projects, or even your 10th project in the game industry, all while getting paid well for what you do. So sign up for those in the description below or in the card up above, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.